Welcome to lecture number 7 on visualization of graphs. Today we want to talk about so-called upward planar drawings. If we have a directed graph, then our directed edges usually want to represent something. That can be many things. For example, it can represent the time, like in a program evaluation and review technique diagram, or it can represent flow, like in a PetriNet. It can represent a hierarchy, like in phylogenetic networks, and many more. If we want to draw this directed planar graph, then usually what we want is that we want to preserve the general direction of the edges. And for that, we make use of the paradigm called upward planarity. So, a directed graph is upward planar when it emits a drawing that is planar and where all the edges are drawn as upward y-monotone curves. So while this is planar, the edges here are not all drawn upwards. On the other hand, this one here is an upward planar drawing. We first want to find some necessary conditions that a graph must have, such that it has an upward planar drawing. That means that it is upward planar. Can you find some conditions? Well, first of all, of course, it has to be a planar graph. Second of all, if all the edges are supposed to be directed upwards, then we cannot have a directed cycle in it, so it has to be acyclic. So, for example, if we look at this cycle here, if the edges would be directed like this, 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 and this, then at some point you have to go down again to close the cycle. And this is, of course, not possible. There's a third necessary condition. Let's have a look at a single vertex and assume that we have some incoming edges and some outgoing edges like this. Let's try to draw this. We can start with the green incoming edge. Then if we follow the embedding, then we have outgoing edges, so they go upwards. Then again we have green incoming edges, so following the embedding they have to be here. But now these two outgoing edges have to lie in between, so like this. But then they cannot be drawn upwards, so we have a contradiction. And such a vertex is called not bimodal. On the other hand, this one here is a bimodal vertex. And bimodal means just that the outgoing edges and the incoming edges form two disjoint intervals. Here we have this interval for the green incoming edges and this for the blue outgoing, so they overlap. Here they don't. So we have three necessary conditions. Unfortunately, these conditions are not sufficient, but we need a little bit more. In 1987, and independently in 1988, it was proven by Kelly and by Diet Batista and Tavasia that the following three statements are equivalent. A graph is upward planar. It can be drawn upward planar with straight lines, so we don't even need curves. We can always do it with straight line segments. And the graph is the spanning subgraph of a planar ST digraph. Okay, so what does this mean? First of all, it's planar, so it has no crossings, that one we know. But an ST digraph is something we haven't seen before. An ST digraph is an acyclic digraph where we have a single source and a single sink. So let's have a look at the same example we had on the previous page. Here, this one is a source because it only has outgoing edges, but also this one and this one. Also, this one is a sink, it only has incoming edges, but so are these and these. So this is not a planar ST digraph. On the other hand, if we slightly modify it, then we can easily get a planar ST digraph that looks like this. At the moment, we only want to draw graphs that also have their embedding specified. And the only way that we can draw this is that S and T are on the outer face. So we also require that it is embedded such that S and T lie on the outer face. Alternatively, you can also require that the edge is T exists. That also works, but we focus on this first part. Now we want to prove the theorem. The first step, if we have an upward planar straight line drawing, then of course the graph has to be upward planar. So this is very easy. 
Now we want to prove the equivalence between 1 and 3. And for that proof, I will just look at an example. You can work out the details from there. In part 4 of the lecture, we will show how to add edges to an upward planar graph, such that we get a planar ST digraph, and then we will see the proof in more detail. So we look at this example again that we had before. This is clearly an upward planar graph, because this is an upward planar drawing. And now we want to prove that it's the spanning subgraph of a planar ST digraph. For that, we first look at all the things. We choose any of those, and choose that one as our supersync T. And then we add directed edges from these vertices to T. And the same we do for the sources. We choose one as the super source, and add directed edges from this source to the other ones. And the only important thing we have to care about is that these two vertices that we choose lie on the autoface. Of course, we cannot choose this vertex here, because we cannot add a directed edge from here downwards to S. We have to choose autoface vertices S and T, and then we can easily add these few edges, destroy all the other sources and sinks, and we have a planar ST digraph. If we want to go from 3 to 2, so we have the subgraph of a planar ST digraph, and we want to get such a planar straight line drawing, then we proceed as follows. First, we triangulate the graph. So we add directed edges that go conform that we don't get any cycles, such that every face becomes a triangle. And then we inductively construct a drawing of that. And we want to prove that each of these graphs we can draw in a pre-specified triangle. For the induction, the base case is that we have just our vertex S, the vertex T, and some vertex in between. And however the triangle looks like, we can easily just map these three vertices to the corners of the triangle, and we have a drawing of this. Now let's assume that for all upward planar graphs up to some number of vertices, we have proven that this statement. And we want to go to one larger. So we do induction on the number of vertices. We now want to have a look at a single interior vertex. There are some incoming edges and some outgoing edges. And around the vertex all the faces must be triangles, so the neighborhood must look like this. Now there are two cases. First, we have some chord in the neighborhood, for example like this. Do you know how to solve this case? If we now look at this edge and these two edges here, this forms again a triangle and there must be at least one vertex inside. Otherwise, this would not be a chord. So, we take the subgraph that lies inside the green part. This has fewer vertices, so by induction we can draw it in a specified triangle. And then we remove all the interior vertices. We take the large graph. This again has fewer vertices, so we can draw it in a specified triangle. And then we only have to plug these two drawings together and we get a drawing of the whole graph. What about the other case if we have no chord? Then we look at the neighbors with an incoming edge to our vertex. From these neighbors there must be a highest one, so one that doesn't have an outgoing edge to any other of these orange vertices. And we pick that one here. Now we want to do a contraction. And this contraction is safe because we don't have a chord. So we contract this edge here and we get a smaller graph. And that smaller graph, again by induction, we can draw. And now the only thing we have to do is that we place this vertex very close to the drawing of the green vertex and then we have an upper planar drawing of this graph.